Good morning, everyone. Misha here, and I am excited to introduce you to my friend, Cut Leaf Evening Primrose. So I'm actually gonna take you through meeting this plant. Um, I was walking through my neighborhood today, um, just out on a little early morning stroll, and this plant happened to catch my eye. And for all of those of you who are herbalists or who are learning to become herbalists or who want to become to learn herbalists, this is by far my favorite way to get to know a plant. The plants that speak to you, the plants that you look at and you go, oh my gosh, what is that? I wanna know that plant. Don't ever think that the plant doesn't have use or value because every single one of these beautiful plants out here, I promise you they do. It may not be what you need in the moment, but oftentimes it's what you might be needing soon. So this one caught my eye and it's actually really funny because um, <clears throat> I have some cough stuff going on and it turns out this one is probably would be quite helpful for what I have going on. So let's learn about it together and I'll take you through um, meeting it from um, how I learned how I identified it all the way through to um, some of its uses and uh, its magic and medicine. Okay, so you can probably see behind me that this beautiful little plant is literally just kind of growing in the wasteland. And that's a key component if you're wanting to be able to identify the plant, knowing where it's growing. So this is what we would call like pretty sandy soil. That really helped me to be able to identify this plant to know where it comes from. But let's take a closer look at it and I can show you some of the things that we look for when we identify. Okay, so the first thing that really caught my eye was these gorgeous little flowers. And you can see they're closing. And right there, that's kind of a big hint as to what this plant could be. The fact that they've clearly just bloomed for the evening and they're closing now. But we want to look at how many, whoop, how many petals, the, there we go, the plant has. So the flower structure, the fact that it even has flowers makes it really easy to identify. So these flowers are yellow. How many little petals it has, you can see there are four. And the shape and overall structure of the flower. And then I wanna look at the plant itself. So what we call the habit or how the plant is growing. So if you look at the sky, you can see, or this little friend, Sorry, I did not mean to gender type that one. But if you look at this one, you can see that it's growing from these basal rosette, these basal, <clears throat> the, the um, here we go, here's one. The plant starts in this basal pattern of a rosette or a, or a circle, and they're all coming out from the center. The leaves have these little cuts in them, and that will come in handy later on when we're looking at the common name. And then it puts out these almost like little vines from the center. So here's a good example. So you can see the, cent the rosette there and the, the flower is coming off of that one. When we look at the big picture, you can see that all through here, it has those, we have those center, like the center plant, and then it's putting out those those stalks and then if we look at one of the stalks we'll take a look at this guy we want to see are the leaves opposite or are they alternating and they are definitely alternating and then if we can find any fruit at all mm, I don't see any oh there's one here's a, here's a fruit right here <clears throat> so that's the fruit capsule growing on one of them too let's see if I put my hand back there it might make it a little bit easier to see there you go so that one you can see the fruit capsule you can see the shape of the leaves the fact that they're alternating and those are all clues that will help us identify this little beauty. Like a lot of the members of the Evening Primrose family, this plant has four petals and they actually have like little notches in them. Now they can be yellow like you see here or another kind of hallmark of this particular species is that sometimes they'll be a really pretty orange or peach too and the plant can have both colors on it. These lovely flowers are most commonly pollinated by moths because of course they're open at night, but there are a number of other species that will use them during the day. And we even have larger animals like bobwhite quails and goldfinches that are known to feed on the seeds. The flowers have also been used to dye things yellow and they were a favorite of magical practitioners for 
having them on the altar as offerings to the moon and to represent the moon since they do bloom at night. Cutleaf evening primrose is also known as ragged evening primrose and also cut-leaved evening primrose. It's a member of the Anagraceae family, which is the evening primrose family, and the Latin for it is Inorothia laciniatre. Now this beauty is native to the state of Florida, as is just regular plain old evening primrose, which if you've ever heard of evening primrose oil, or if you've ever heard of using evening primrose for things like PMS or women's concerns, that is Anorithria biennis. And that is native to Florida as well, but where I'm at in the south part of the state, we don't really get that one around here. So when we're looking at the medicinal uses of this particular plant, there's not a whole lot of like peer reviewed hardcore journal articles for this one. However, we do have quite a bit for the cousin, just the regular kind of like the well-known evening primrose. And there is a lot of hope and a lot of evidence that there are very similar one-to-one -one kind of equivalent uses for both. So this plant, cut leaf evening primrose, has become quite invasive elsewhere in the world. It's native here to Eastern North America, but in Africa, Asia, Europe, Australia, even North and South America, all over the world, it has become really widespread. And it's hopefully that this one will wind up having a lot of the same similar medicinal values as evening primrose because there are some really wonderful potential uses for this plant in terms of helping with autoimmune issues and a lot of inflammation issues as well. Both the leaves and the roots were used as poultices for bruises and hemorrhoids. So this plant is well known to have analgesic and just in general pain relieving qualities. This plant was also used as a wash for skin conditions, especially anything that was hot and inflamed like eczema or acne. And to this day, evening primrose oil is still used for these conditions. Now the oil actually comes from the seed of the plant and you can see here the fruit capsules that bear the tiny little seeds. The seeds are a high source of omega-6 fatty acids, including gamma-linolic acid and they are really helpful in building brain tissue and bone marrow. The oil extracted from the seeds has long been known to be supportive of females and their hormonal issues because that same oil can act very similar to estrogen and promote estrogen in the body. In doing so, it can help ease any kind of disorder that is associated with hormonal imbalances, everything from headaches to mood swings, even hot flashes and PMS. This plant also had culinary uses too, and it was considered to be a pot herb by a number of the indigenous people here in North America, including the Cherokee. Now, what a pot herb is, is that basically means that you can eat it cooked it isn't necessarily going to taste great raw, but you would want to cook it, possibly even changing the water several times. So a good kind of rule for this one is if you think of something like cooked spinach or like a cooked asparagus where, I mean, you can eat asparagus raw, but it doesn't necessarily taste great. It's like that. You would want to cook it to really be able to get the nutritional value and the tastiness out of it. The root could also be used as uh, food as well. You would dig it up, cook it several times, boiling it and changing the water, and it would have a taste that was very similar to a parsnip. Cut leaf evening primrose is a great example of an often overlooked weed that packs quite a punch. And hopefully the more we learn about it, the more medicinal value we'll find in this beautiful little ground cover.